Hi, you guys. It's Renata. I'm catching up on my war news. Uh, so I thought I would share an article that I just uh, finished reading. And it's talking about how Russia is giving um, direct threats to the U.S. and other countries uh, for the fact that they are coming to the aid of Ukraine uh, by providing them with weapons against Russia. And Russia has already warned countries not to get involved. And so they are giving a direct uh, threat to the U.S. This is a, a very serious thing. This is um, something to pay attention to. So let me share my screen. Okay, uh, Russian threatens direct military confrontation with U.S. over Ukraine. A Russian official warned last week that the efforts by the U.S. and other Western nations to arm Ukraine against Russia's invading forces puts them at risk of a direct military confrontation with Russia. That's basically a threat. It is saying if you continue to help uh, the Ukraine, then there's going to be a direct military confrontation. And believe me, Putin means this. He means this. He has warned over and over not to help. See, Russia thought that they were going to go into Ukraine and that this would be a 48-hour, one-month maximum operation. And that they would take over the Ukraine and it'd be over and done with. So now we're going into, what, month and a half, two months or so? And they're not happy with the progress. And so he's willing to do whatever he needs to do to over, overtake the Ukraine. Um, but by these other countries, aiding Ukraine is making the operation harder for Russia, which is not making Putin happy at all. Russian ambassador to the U.S., Anatoly Anatov told Newsweek late Friday that Western states are directly involved in the current events as they continue to pump Ukraine with weapons and ammunition, thereby inciting further bloodshed. Anatov's comments come after around a month and a half of fighting between Russia, uh, Russian invasion forces and Ukrainian defenders. Even before the fighting began, the U.S. and other Western nations has sent hundreds of anti-tank and anti-aircraft launchers to Ukraine. The U.S. and members of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO, have continued to send weapons to Ukraine throughout the ongoing fighting. You know, it's really um, interesting to me because... Putin has warned over and over not to help the Ukraine. And I'm not saying that the U.S. and the other countries should not help Ukraine. But it also makes me wonder, are they intentionally doing this like to kind of like incite an attack on the U.S.? And again, it, it's OK to help to me, you know, uh, my opinion, um, to a degree, but not if it's going to put your own people at risk. Maybe they can continue to help with food and they can continue to help, you know, with different types of outreach, you know, that they've been doing. But this is kind of, in my opinion, putting us at jeopardy. So you guys let me know what you think about that. Um, but it goes on to say last week, the U.S. supplied another $300 million worth of weapons to Ukraine, including advanced switchblade 600 um, loitering mutations or mutants, however you say that word, that can fly above the battlefield, scanning for targets before diving into them and exploding. And that's the other thing that's coming to my mind. If you're giving away all of this, what, what are we going to have if we, if we get attacked? What are we going to have? Um, can fly above the battlefield, scanning for targets before dividing into them and exploding. The new Switchblade 600 drones are more powerful than the Switchblade 300 
predecessors and can take out enemy tanks. So they're sending them very powerful um, switchblade drones that can take out a whole tank. So when you see those big army tanks, they have something that can just take it out. And that's what the U.S. Um, has sent over to the Ukraine. We warned that such actions are dangerous and provocative as they are directed against our state, Anatov said. They can lead the U.S. and the Russian Federation onto the path of direct military confrontation. Any supply of weapons and military equipment from the West performed by transport convoys throughout the territory of Ukraine is a legitimate military target for our armed forces, uh, Russia's ambassador to the U.S. added. Other Russian officials in recent weeks have also threatened to target weapons transports to, uh, to Ukraine. In March, Deputy Foreign Minister Sergio Rakabak, and, and forgive me, but these Russian names and the Ukrainian names, I'm not familiar with how to pronounce, um, said that the thoughtless transfer of Western weapons to Ukraine represented an exclatory component of Washington's policy. Uh, Ryabak said Russian forces could attack those weapon shipments. Now, see, herein lies the problem. NATO has said if Russia attacks the weapons or the weaponry that they're sending over to Ukraine, then that's going to be a problem for the U.S. So they're saying if they attack any of those convoys coming in with the weapons that the U.S. is sending over there, that is going to set NATO off to declare war. So Russia is saying just because of the fact that we're sending the weapons can make them declare war. And we're saying if you attack the weapons, that can declare war. So war seems imminent, you guys. It seems imminent between the U.S. and Russia. Then you have to think about it like this. If U.S. and Russia get into it, then China's going to gonna jump in on Russia's side. And then we have, you know, allies on our side. So these are the wars and the rumors of wars that the Bible talks about. This is end time stuff, you guys. I'm telling you, this is end time stuff. And it really, really seems like it's going to happen. And that's why I keep reporting on it, because I have been I'm not even a, a, a political person like this. But this is something that I feel that I want to pay attention to, because every day is escalating every single day. So, you know, now's the time for us to prepare for what we're going to do. The things that we're seeing in the news um, that's happening in Ukraine, and I'm going to do another video on that because some people don't even believe that all of that stuff is really happening. And some of it may not be, but um, that's for another video. But the things that we see, the images that we see of that war and past wars, that very well could happen over here. Just because it has not so far does not mean that it won't. Because I'll tell you, if it does, it will more than likely be Russia to uh, do the attack on the U.S. And like I said, China has their back. So it could be a bad thing for us. OK, so, you know, we have to really be prepared. Um. Other Russian officials in recent weeks have also threatened to target weapons transports to Ukraine. In March, Deputy Foreign Minister Sergio Rakabak said that the thoughtless transfer of, of Western weapons to Ukraine represented an exploratory component of Washington's policy. And I think I read this already, so forgive me. Rakabak said Russian forces could attack those weapons shipments. Days later, Russian, uh, Russian Foreign Minister Sergio Lavrov reiterated his deputy's remark, stating, any cargo moving into the Ukrainian territory, which we would believe is carrying weapons, would be fair game. Okay, now Russia is saying any, if they see any cargo, they don't care who it came from, if it's moving into Russia, it's fair game. 
they feel like they can take it out. Now, I don't know what their rationale is other than, you know, this is war because whatever's going in Ukraine is should be Ukraine's business. It shouldn't be Russia's business, but it's war. We're talking about war. And the U.S. And, and other countries who is sending the Ukraine weapons is saying, don't touch our stuff, okay? Well, we send our stuff in there, don't touch it. Because if you do, it's going to be a problem. So there's going to be a problem. There's going to be a problem. Uh, Russian forces have carried out multiple strikes in Western Ukraine, landing within a few miles of NATO ally countries. On March 13th, Russian missiles struck a Ukrainian military base near the city of uh, Yavr, y Yavarv, don't know how to say that, you guys, where Ukrainian forces have been training with foreign volunteers uh, comprising Ukraine's International Legion. The sprawling Ukrainian military base stretches within 10 miles of the NATO allied nation of Poland. Uh, and Poland, I think Poland, I think Russia is planning an attack on Poland as well, you guys. I've read that in a couple places. Um, mainly because Poland has taken in a lot of Ukrainian people. And uh, so now they need to be prepared for war as well. Before you know it, Russia's going to be fighting with everybody because they're just, they, they're, they're, yeah, they're going to be fighting with everybody. On March 19th, uh, Russia claimed it deployed an air launch Kenzo hypersonic missile, which targeted an alleged Ukrainian weapons depot uh, located near Delyatine. Uh, the Ukrainian village is located about 46 miles from Ukraine's border with Romania and about 88 miles from Ukraine's border with Hungary. Or, yes, Hungary or Hungary, however you say that, Hungary. Um, Romania and Hungary are both members of the NATO alliance. It's unclear how Russia will strike weapons shipments flowing into Ukraine from the West since the Russian military announced it would shift its forces to uh, Ukraine's eastern Damba region. Despite Russia's uh, shifting war objectives, Anatov says Russia's demands for a settlement to the com conflict remain the same, including, now here's what Russia is saying, We'll stop this war. Here's, here's their demands, including the demand for unconditional consideration of Russia's security interests, the demilitarization and denazification of the Ukrainian state. Now he's saying that he want uh Putin is saying he wants to denazify Ukraine. He also wants to demilitarize them. My opinion, I think that is totally unrealistic for uh, a leader of one country to go to another person's country and tell them to demilitarize themselves. So in other words, don't even try to protect yourself and denazify yourself. That's his opinion. If he feels they're Nazis, that's his opinion. That's not his country. That is my opinion. I know a lot of people watching this video is for, you know, Putin and for what he is doing. I think it is wrong. I know that a lot of this is propaganda. I know that um, probably most of it is not even true uh, for what we're seeing in the media. But just going off of what I'm reading here, stay over there in Russia. Same with America. Stay over here. Like everybody stay in your own country, do your own thing. That's 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 how I feel. Let me know how you feel. Maybe you don't agree with me and you don't have to. It's okay. But I just I don't understand why you're telling these people to 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 not arm themselves, to not have a military, to not be able to protect their country. Like who are you to do that? Russia is your country. I see it as a takeover. I see it as um, China and Russia want to take over this new world order. That's what I see. And I see it as infighting, as I said in my other video, I see it as infighting between these world leaders. Who's going to take over this new world order? That's what I see. 
Um, the demilitarization and denazification of the Ukrainian state, ensuring its neutral and non-nuclear status, as well as the recognition of Russian sovereignty over Crimea and the independence of the um, Donetsk and Luskats People's Republic. Okay, I have to do my, my research on that because I keep hearing about um, Crimea and, and their independence. I don't really know much about that. But that is the end of the article. I have shared with you guys, you know, my opinion on this particular situation. So leave me a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Um, most importantly, prepare. Prepare as best you can. I mean, I don't know how you can prepare for, um, you know, a war like this, like, you know, what we're seeing, at least what we're seeing on the news in the Ukraine, I don't know, you know, how those people could have possibly uh, prepared other than getting out of Dodge like most of them did. But, um, you know, we need to come up with some plans for ourselves and our families, because I'm telling you, it, it's more than likely going to happen more than likely going to happen over here. I don't know if it will be on that same scale of things. Um, like I said, they are sending, the U.S. is sending quite a bit of weaponry to the Ukraine. I doubt if they would, you know, send all of our weapons over there, but they, you know, they, they have sent a lot. So prayerfully, we would be able to um, stand up, you know, against Russia because they do have um, more nuclear arms than anyone else. So preparing ourselves uh, for as far as food goes and a plan of where you would go if something were to happen, the, the very, very important things. That's very important. But the most important thing is to prepare yourself spiritually if you have not. Um, so Romans 10 and 9, it, it tells us that if thy if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. So you just need to simply say it, Lord Jesus. And shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's all you need to do to get saved. It's really important, very important to get saved right now if you have not, okay? Read Romans 10 and 9. It tells you what to do from that day forward. Live your life as a Christian, pray, read your word, ask God for whatever it is that you need. Uh, ask him to save your soul, to save your family. Um, ask him to ask the Holy Spirit to guide you through whatever we have to go through in life, even if it has nothing to do with war. Whatever we need to face in life, the Holy Spirit will guide us through it. So, um, you know, I, I hope that this video was helpful. I would encourage you to keep up on what's going on in this world because things are moving rapidly. Things are moving fast. We are definitely living in the last days. We just are. You know, read your word about, about the signs, you know, the signs of, of the last days. And you will see that a lot of this stuff has already come to pass and it is currently coming to pass. And these things have to happen. They're going to happen. They're biblical. They're in the Bible. So we just need to be steadfast and unmovable. Okay, you guys, that will end this video. And I'm actually probably going to do a couple more tonight. Thank you for listening. Please leave your comments in the comment section. You don't have to agree with me. I would love to know your stance on this, on this war situation. Um, so leave your comments, please thumbs up this video and please subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. Thank you.